Okay. All right. So now it is time to go up these stairs. I'm just kind of like giving another look to places we've already been. And tell me that this wasn't like blocked off at one point. You know, this nice big bookshelf was in front of this blocking this. So this side of the house was blocked off for a while, it looks like. And uh, somebody has moved this um, bookshelf out of the way so you can get past it. So let's go in here. This light will probably go out. So we'll just, you know, preempt it. No, I'll leave it on. But That kind of creeped me out right there. Just the pipe hanging down. It looked like somebody was standing up there. Ah, it's just house, man. Okay. This is a long set of stairs. Okay. Whoa. A light is left on. So it looks like maybe uh, Sam had like a little secret room in here. This is kind of neat, right? God, wouldn't that be awesome if you have like a secret room in your own house that nobody else knew about? Bratmobile, the review, Gurney's A Plum, fifth column. Scrap, scrap, scrap. Turn the lamp on and off. Oh gosh, this house is creepy. It's kind of awesome too, though. Well, let's read some scraps of paper. I can't turn this one around. Costumes, Skeletons and Devils, <laughs> Cheerleaders from the Smells Like Teen Spirit video, One Girl Dressed as Jackie Kennedy. Okay, were these like ideas for Halloween maybe? Uh, let's see, the Psycho House Girl. The coolest stuff about being the Psycho House Girl. Okay, so she, she is known as the Psycho House Girl, Sam is. Psycho House Girl. Cool thing number one, everybody in the hall thinking you don't know they're looking at you and whispering as you walk past because I guess they haven't heard of peripheral. I would imagine vision is the next word there. Uh, that's a lie to mom and dad situation, but it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome and everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Okay, so, uh, just got a little desk here. Oh, goody, another cassette. We have a letter, pizza box, more chips. She likes her Judy's potato chips, or maybe she doesn't. She didn't finish either bag. Sonic Youth, The Amps, Bikini Kill, Sunday, November 5th at Roseland. Grab label. Girl Justice Now. Okay. Pizza box open. Nothing in it. Pencil. Nothing special about the pencil. Nothing special about the pen. Letter. Good fellow, senior high school. This is to Samantha. There's no date on it. Come on, who doesn't put dates on their letters? Dear Miss Greenbrier, I appreciate the time and effort you put into writing your letter. It showed initiative and was well written, but it does not change my mind in this matter. While I understand that Miss DeSoto is a friend of yours, the fact of the matter is that she defaced school property with profanity. The fact that she allegedly defaced her own locker in retaliation for another student doing the same to yours is immaterial. As to your complaint that no other student has been punished for their part in this incident, the fact is that no guilty party has come forward, and there has been no convincing evidence as to who might have defaced your locker. In other words, there is no one to punish. I would suggest letting this issue drop, as it will only bring more unwanted attention on yourself which I believe is what you claim began this whole incident in the first place. Sincerely, Principal Sheldon Grossman. Well, I mean, I'll give him some credit for writing back to her. I mean, at least he took the time to do that, and he, that he read her letter and listened to her arguments. But apparently something happened. Somebody 
uh, wrote or painted something on Sam's locker. And then uh, Lonnie didn't like that, so she defaced school property with profanity. And she also defaced her own locker. Probably as a sign of solidarity, right? I mean, who knows? Who knows what they wrote on Sam's locker? Probably some kind of slur, maybe. I don't get Lonnie sometimes. Hmm. Like, her band, and our zine, and her hair, and everything are all anti-authority. But I watch her in JROTC, and she's doing drills in perfect formation. Following orders, no question. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like, she's going to join the army and then have to... lie? About who she is? Hmm. She said they don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like it was no big deal. This from the girl who trashed her locker to, like, defend my honor. I've learned when to stop arguing, though. I don't think Lonnie even gets Lonnie sometimes. Yeah, there does seem to be a definite contradiction there, that's for sure. And I can understand Sam's confusion. Okay. Nothing down here. Okay, let's move some pillows out of the way. Make sure that uh, nothing is under pillows. Oh, there's the cassette. Alright, I guess I have to play this cassette now. You know, if it's music, I'm just going to stop it immediately. <laughs> Oh. Yep, yeah, it's music. Okay. Alright. Hope you guys don't mind that I did that. I already explained my reasons why. Okay, we have a comic book here. Women Outlaws. Alright. This will show you who runs things around this joint. She's tougher than a wild mustang. No female is going to tell me. Yag! Yag. I like that. Yag. Uh... This is an, probably a pretty old comic if it's just 10 cents. Women Outlaws. Here we've got... Oh, part of it torn out. For whatever reason. Why is... What's the deal with this? She make a... Maybe make a copy of it? That is a definite... Copy of... The comic book. Yeah, you can see there's the horns there. The horns there. So, looks like she f made a photocopy, maybe, of the comic book and then cut parts of it out. Maybe she wanted to cut out this woman for some reason. Maybe we'll see that cut out part someplace else. Uh, wipers. Okay. Kicking against the patriarchy. Heard enough? Had enough? Uh, the Great Goodfellow Riot of 95. Goodfellow being the high school she goes to. Again, girl, justice now. Stop it. Uh, let's see, we've got um, Captain A and Rev L Lucian Girl. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let's see, this one's for you, Grossman. Grossman. Was that the principal? Whoops, that's not it. Grossman, okay. So that's what's going on there. And then here we've got a really pretty cool drawing here. Heavens to Betsy, Bratmobile, at X-Ray Cafe, Wednesday, April 3rd. All ages, $5 girls to the front. Alright, I don't need no stinking men. Let's move this lid out of the way. And they have a zine. Oh, okay, there you go. She just photocopied it and used it for the cover of their zine. Kick Against the Patriarchy, The Great Goodfellow Riot of 95, Revolution, Revolution, issue number one. And Oh, and she says this one's for you, Grossman. <laughs> Heard enough? Had enough? Ready to join the revolution and take a stand against Grossman and the Patriarchy? Yeah. Fight back. Stand up, Captain A and Revolution Girl. Maybe you just want more cool zines, or maybe even a mixtape. Send us your missives from the Girl Riot Underground, and then an address there. <laughs> okay. All 
right, well, either they never got around to giving out the zines or they didn't really sell that well, if they were even selling them. What's going on down here? Ooh, there's a panel here. Well, that's so that's how you get into this secret room. Don't worry, we'll go back. Don't you worry. I just want to come down here first. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. Huh. Well, I opened this door first, so let's just go this way first. Hope that we don't get locked out. That would suck. Lights are on. This should... Oh. Unlock from the inside. Yeah, so that takes us back out to the rest of the house. Now we've got the flickering lights. Guardian angels up above. Bless this house with lots of love. Okay. Here we have a little slip. Salon Josephine. Clients named Jan Greenbrier. So she got her hair done. Probably to go see Rick, right? That's probably what's going on there. Unfortunately, I don't know the dates well enough to know when what happened. I mean, when was Rick transferred to her department and all that? All right. Turn the lamp on. We have a letter. We have a Spanish book. Ah, she's learning Spanish. How about that? Why wouldn't she be? Lonnie being from Mexico and all. Note. Letter. Aha, offer of promotion. Bruce Pendleton, head of personnel, State Forestry Service. Dear head conservationist Greenbrier, due to your exemplary management of the Flint Rock prescribed burn operation last year and the service's need for experienced personnel. Whoa, that actually sounds like somebody walking around, man. Whoa, that, that one yeah, creeped me out. That's That was a little different of a sound than what I've heard so far in the game. That really sounded like somebody walking. And uh, these lights flickering is also a little bit concerning because of what we read earlier. The electrician's report about how the lights will flicker when uh, you walk around. So, uh, yeah, a little creepy there. little creepy, little creepy. little creepy. That really upped the creep factor. Due to your exemplary management of the Flint Rock prescribed burn operation last year and the service's need for experienced personnel to direct regional operations, we would like to offer you the position of Regional Conservation Management Director responsible for operations throughout Northwestern Oregon. Your assistance would be sought to fill your previous position on site at the Flint Rock National Forest. Your new posting would be at the Regional Management Building located at 128 Bullhorn Road, which should be much more convenient for your daily commute. Please respond as soon as possible regarding your decision. We very much look forward to your reply. Signed, Bruce Pendleton, on uh, February 8th. Okay. Maybe she got her hair did for her uh, promotion. I don't know. Maybe it has nothing to do with Rick at all. Although I doubt that. Just the way this couch is pulled out. I guess that slip we already found was what we were supposed to find. Now, it's a magazine in there. Let's read this note. Man, people, they just left stuff sitting around. Hey, Lonnie, sorry my mom was such a bitch last night. Okay, gosh, why don't you just leave that out so your mom reads it? She's hardly ever around since her forest is like an hour away, and then when she is home, she takes it out on you like, because you're not a member of the family, she knows you won't call her on it, and I'm sorry. Aw. Her mom is mean to Lonnie. Lonnie writes back, I'm guessing, in red. Haha, uh -huh, it's okay. I know she's just jealous of our cool and free-willing lifestyles. I feel sorry for you. I'm lucky my mom lives in Florida. You have to have a mom every day. Sam writes, sorry, I didn't mean to bring up the mom thing like that. I know, I shouldn't complain. Lonnie says, no, I'm being serious. My mom is a psycho Christian, and her new husband, Dawn, is a complete tool. Living in Florida with him is her eternal punishment in my mind. And then Sam asks, so you wouldn't rather live with your mom in Florida? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, she would not. I think she means it. Or at least she wants Lonnie to think she means it. Examine magazine. 
Froth, Music and Culture. Tincture, Poughkeepsie Teenagers of the Year. Guided by Voices in Medicine. Okay. Uh, huh. Okay, nothing else down here. It's just so weird how everybody's stuff is kind of intertwined, you know. Here's a note to her mother right next to a note about how her mother is a bitch. Ah, look what I found. Oh, looks like they're... Oh, that's just the magazine underneath. Uh, let's see. Call Daniel back. Daniel says he's coming over to get his game back. And then... Okay. Oh, Inside Edition. So upstairs in uh, Mama Dad's bedroom, we found a, a video cassette that said in Inside Edition. I was like, why in the world did they record Inside Edition? Well, I'm going to guess this is why. Oh, no. Investigative team visits camp whose specialists help adolescents overcome deviant behavior and homosexuality. Uh, well, that really paints a picture right there, doesn't it? So, looking at this, it seems it's pretty obvious that her parents, or at least one of her parents, did not approve of Lonnie's relationship with Sam. Oh, that's a shame. Katie, you know how mom and dad are. Not exactly super open-minded about things. It feels like every minute I don't spend with Lonnie, I spend worrying about them finding out about us. And what would happen if they did? You know Dad's joke about the nunnery that he'd tell whenever you brought boys around the old house? I wonder where he'd want to send me. Hmm. Oh, gosh. Um... I don't know, uh, I, I guess we'll just keep exploring this part of the house and then go upstairs afterwards, maybe? I'm not real sure what order to do this in right now, but there's a note just hanging, or a stub. National tickets. Earth, wind, and fire. Yeah. This is February 23rd. So I'm just thinking that this is, um, her mom went with Rick to this concert. I could be wrong. That's what I'm guessing. Oh man. All right, let's go let's go look upstairs. This is getting this is turning into big. Maybe this is just a small little room up here we could look in real quick. Yeah. I just I just need to look up here first. A handle. Neat. I'll be damned. Okay. Well, now we're back up into the guest room. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad I did this because now I know where this goes. Notes. What do you know? 196.3. Oh, boy. Well, we know what this is, right? That is no doubt the combination to this safe down here. The one that I was afraid was going to be creepy to look in. So let's go ahead and get this over with. Let's look in the safe. And um, there's so many different stories going on here. It's kind of neat. We obviously have the, the story of Lonnie and Sam. We have the story of Mom with Rick. And then there's the story of Terrence and his father and his uncle. And this will be in relation to, I imagine, Terry and his father. Or his, uh, Terry and his uncle. I screwed that up, didn't I? It was 0961. Um. <laughs> it was one of those, wasn't it? See, I went I went and talked, and then I forgot. Wasn't it one of those? 1960 or 0961? Firstly, there's no run in this game. Or just, actually, I thought there was, but... I don't know. I play a lot of games, as I said, in another game. <laughs> I play a lot of games at the same time, and I forget what you could do in each game. I really thought there was a run in this game, but I guess not. 196.3. Holy cow. What is wrong with me? How in the world did I think that was a zero? Man. I mean, I'm, normally I'm really good with numbers. I really am. 
196.3. Did that change? I know it didn't change. It couldn't have changed, but... Damn. Well, forgive me. I'm sorry. I know that you guys most probably remembered what the number was. And you're like, you moron! It's 196.3. So. It's just a slight diversion. 